Hey guys, today we're going to be installing the highly anticipated OM617 Serpentine Conversion Kit on the OM617 I've got here behind me. So buckle up and let's get to it. Alright, so here we've got an OM617 that's been prepped and it's ready for the Serpentine Kit to go on, mainly because I've already had it on here several times. But I'll walk you through everything you need to do to get to this point. So first let's go over the water pump pulley options that came with the 617. You have this bigger one that was the standard up until the later years. Then they got the smaller version offered. And so you wrap a belt around a pulley. The smaller the pulley is, the more times it's going to spin around in one given revolution of that belt. So we've gone ahead and matched our new water pump pulley to the smaller pulley to give maximum res maximum results. So you're going to get the performance of the highly sought after smaller water pump pulley. Now to initially get that pulley off your water pump, there's four bolts with 10 millimeter heads. You have to use an open end wrench to get to them. You get those four out, pull the pulley off, you'll come to your water pump. So here's the stock water pump. It's uh, longer, as you'll notice, than this one that we've got installed on here. And so you pull these screws out. There are five of them. And you're probably going to have to use a dead blow hammer or something to beat around the water pump um, to get it freed up. This thing was heavily rusted inside the housing. And so it took some good persuasion to get it out. So here we've already installed our shorter water pump um, from a different Mercedes model. Uh, I just rec recommend getting new hardware for your water pump. Make sure you have a new gasket and that'll, that hardware gets torqued to 10 Newton meters. Make sure your water pump's seated fully um, and tightly against the water pump housing itself. So once you get that done, this pulley um, can actually go on and get installed. The other thing is the crank pulley. So this one's pretty straightforward. There are six bolts down on the inside. They use a six millimeter Allen head uh, bit. And the key with removing this without breaking it, breaking the bolts off, is take like a pick or something, clean the the Allen bolt heads out, use some compressed air, make sure they're completely cleaned out. And then when you put your uh, socket bit in the Allen screw, make sure that bit is fully seated in the head because nine times out of 10, what people do is they put the bit into a dirty bolt. They only get maybe a quarter of the bit into the bolt and then they round the head off. So that's the key for getting those loose. The other thing you can do is take um, like a chisel, put it on the head, take a hammer, just give it a couple light taps and that vibration can also help loosen things up. So the big benefit with our serpentine kit is we're eliminating essentially these two front pulleys off here. On the water pump pulley, we're essentially removing this part that juts out in front of the pulley grooves themselves. And so measuring a stock engine with a mechanical fan installed from this face right here um, where this bolt goes in, we had a little over five and a half inches from this face to the front of the fan. And with the new serpentine kit, we're right at two and a half inches. So you're going to save roughly three inches um, from what you had. Now that does not take into account if you have an AC compressor down here that's sticking further forward or this thermostat housing which sticks just a little bit further forward than the water pump pulley. You'll also have to remove this engine hoist bracket that's on the front. That's a 19 millimeter head. Not to worry because a new engine hoist mount is built into the new bracket.
you will definitely want to clean the threads out of this hole, which is M10 by 1.5. And you'll also want to clean the threads out of this guy, which is M12 by 1.5, because I have de designed the bracket to utilize hardware that will go deep into both of these holes. This hole was never used as far as I'm aware, so it's usually full of dirt. So obviously I filmed the video of the vacuum delete installation the day before this video. So I went ahead and um, mocked everything up with the vacuum pump on. Now to run the serpentine conversion with the vacuum pump installed, you'll have to rotate the vacuum pump one notch to the left hand side of the vehicle or one notch to clockwise if you're looking at the vacuum pump from the front. Now the key here is we are utilizing these two holes and to be able to do that this hole works out just fine. We've got an aluminum spacer that goes up here. Down here, unfortunately, we have this, um, I think it's a check valve bolt. It's a very, very specialized, specific bolt. I don't know that you would honestly even be able to find a new one if you destroyed this thing. So there's a washer underneath it. I've let that remain in there. The only thing I've done is I've taken it out and I've reinstalled it and I tightened it to where it gave me the least clearance and fitment issues. Now this other spacer that goes by our check valve bolt head, I had to grind just a little bit off to fit underneath that without ever touching it. And so I will let you do that part yourself so that you can ensure that you have the right amount taken off to clear your specific bolt if you do in fact leave the vacuum pump installed. In this scenario we are not going to run the vacuum pump so we will need to remove the two bolts um, 12 o'clock and 10 o'clock. They have a five millimeter allen head and now we are ready to install our plate. Now this plate has a lot of design time in it. It locates between these two holes here, these two holes here. I take up the differential in depth using these spacers. It's got a weld nut on the back to catch our tensioner bolt. It's got an idler mount on it. Probably the easiest way to start is take your M6 bolt, put your lock washer under the head, put that through the plate, put your aluminum spacer on, start that in. One other thing I want to mention, I would absolutely recommend using blue Loctite on all of this hardware. I am actually not doing a final installation just yet. So this is just a mock-up for me here. So I'm not gonna be using blue Loctite on any of this, but when it comes to final installation, absolutely you wanna use blue Loctite because this is a very high vibration area. Then we'll catch our second spacer, put our other six millimeter bolt in there. Now you have your M10 and your M12 bolts. You can thread those in. They each have split lock washers to go under the heads of those as well. And you can go ahead and tighten everything up. This bolt's gonna take a 19 millimeter socket. This one's gonna take a 17. You'll also notice I've left a clearance hole so that you can get to this bolt with the crush washers, the banjo bolt that connects the top of the head back down to the water pump housing, just in case you ever have a leak there and you need to replace this line. I've seen these lines actually rust out and leak. That'd save you from having to pull all the rest of everything else off. The next thing that you're more than likely going to want to do is install 
your turnbuckle for your alternator mount. Now keep in mind this is actually a 3 8 bolt so this is going to utilize a 9 16 socket but a 14 millimeter is pretty close. Notice I haven't given you torque specs on any of these. Um, maximum torque uh, for these two bolts definitely would probably blow the top of the head out. Um, this guy is rated at 80, 82 newton meters. This one's at 143. They definitely don't need to be that nearly that tight. Just snug them up till the lock washer deforms. You feel it bottom out, tighten up. You got your blue lock tight on there. This bolt utilizes nylocks at both ends to help prevent that loosening through vibration. And so at this point, we can install some of our idler pulleys. You'll notice a similar mounting system for these two over here. So you've got a bolt and a washer. You've got your idler pulley that's supplied, and then this idler pulley sleeve that I machine to keep everything centered, spaced, and tightened. So you can install both of those. This would actually be a critical place to use your blue lock tight, and these are going to be 19 millimeter head as well. Now I won't be going over specifically in this video the alternator and power steering bracket installation or the installation of the alternator or power steering pump. You'll have whatever power steering pump installed that you want to have. You'll have your alternator installed and when you install the turnbuckle I would recommend leaving about a 3 16th to quarter inch gap in between the alternator and the valve cover. So now is probably a good time to tackle accessories that you can run with the serpentine conversion kit. Obviously you need an alternator. This bracket was specifically designed with the serpentine kit in mind. Actually all of it was. But this was designed to utilize an 80, 230, or 244 alternator that comes with a six rib alternator um, pulley already installed. So that works out really nice. You'll have to run this at a minimum. You don't have to run power steering, but I assume most people that would go through the effort to do a serpentine conversion are gonna be running power steering. So all of my uh, alternator brackets have some form of power steering bracket included in that bracket, it's a two-part two bracket. And so in this case, we have a TC Saginaw pump installed here. I've gone ahead and gone to Trail Gear, gotten one of their pulleys, got it lined up. You actually just line a power steering pulley up by eye. So I used a straight edge and used a power steering pump pulley installation tool to set the depth to where everything was lined up. Then I went and got a flanged head screw, lock tighted that in. That's basically just a fail safe. The press on fit of the pulley on the shaft should keep it from moving. This bolt is just a, an insurance policy from this pulley ever coming off. So we have our alternator power steering pump. And then down here in this specific example, I have a Toyota V6 power, um, AC compressor that I've installed a Jeep um, AC compressor clutch kit on, which converts it to a six rib. And I have two kits available, one for the 3VZ and one for the 5VZ. At the time of filming this video, both of my AC compressor brackets will line up to that serpentine pulley up with everything else. Um, you're more than welcome to go out and figure out your own AC compressor bracket mounting system to line up your specific compressor. You can absolutely run any combination that you want if you leave the AC compressor out, that's going to work just fine. If you leave the power steering pump out, that'll work just fine. So now we'll go ahead and install our pulleys. So you've got your six bolts 
These will get torqued to 25 Newton meters. Keep in mind, I don't have the washers at the time of filming for the crankshaft bolts, but make sure to include your washers under those bolts. Next, we'll install our water pump pulley. These bolts will get torqued to approximately 20 Newton meters. And the last thing we have is our tensioner, which has this dowel, which goes in this hole. So you get that lined up first. And this is the part where things get extremely tight. And the issue I'm having right here is the outer pointed edge of this hex bolt is actually just barely grazing our tensioner here. So I'm going to tighten this bolt just enough to clock it. Now keep in mind that the portion that rests right next to that bolt head, this back base part, this does not move. The front is what rotates. So as long as you get this base to seat nicely up against that bolt head, it's not going to ever move on you. So there's going to be a little bit of play in this, if you can see that. And you want to tighten this so that you have a nice gap once your tensioner reaches the end of its useful life and so that it doesn't rub your belt into itself. So don't put your wrench away just yet. You'll need a 3 8 drive to go into your tensioner and that is how you loosen it up so you can install your serpentine belt, which makes for a very quick, easy, painless belt changing experience. Now you can check out my other video that explains how to measure for a belt on a belt drive system. And in this case, you want to have this tensioner in the position where you want it and your alternator in the position where you want it when everything is tight. And it might take you a couple tries. I actually had to try twice to get this belt to fit exactly how I wanted it. We're gonna go over our alternator under this idler, over the power steering, over the top of this idler, down around our crankshaft, around our AC compressor, and lastly, over our water pump pulley and under our tensioner. And as you will notice, I'm using a smooth tensioner off a 6.5 liter GM diesel with the ribs on each side to retain the belt so it never slips off. And at that point, you can make sure you have proper tension. And if you need to, you can adjust the turnbuckle for your alternator. Now, if you get into a tight spot and your belt is shot, your tensioner is maxed out because your belt is stretched out and you need to make it to the next location to get a new belt, the turnbuckle comes in as a backup because you can extend the length of this to get just a little bit more usable life out of your belt. So thanks for watching. Thanks for being patient during the design process of this serpentine conversion system. I wanted to make sure that I was offering you guys the best serpentine um, conversion system that I can come up with. I've gone through a couple different iterations by this point and I think this is going to perform very well for you. It's going to give you a nice reliable belt drive system to where you can set it and forget it. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you in our next one. Did somebody say supercharger? Ooh, yep, I'm liking that.